Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're hailing from. Welcome to another episode of Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management Presents. Uh, if, if you're playing this with audio on and you're on the call, please mute. Um, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, we're we're going to talk about governance and compliance today, and we're joined by the one and only Jeff Brent uh, from the Rackham team. So I will let him introduce himself as well as the others on the call. Thank you, Chris. Uh, my name is Jeff Brent. I am coming to you live from sunny South Florida, where it is freezing today. It is 72 degrees. Oh, uh, it's yeah. snowing out here. I had to put a long sleeve shirt on and everything. There's snow out here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm the director of product management for Rackham. Thank you for hosting us today. And we have yet another exciting uh, topic for us, governance, risk, and compliance, which we call GRC lovingly. And with, uh, with me today, we have um, a team that's gonna run through all kinds of uh, wonderful demonstration and presentations and topics. So I hope everyone is ready for a full show today. And, and with me, we have our wonderful and beautiful leader, Jaya, who is a distinguished engineer who runs our governance, risk and compliance. Uh, we're gonna start off with her and then we're gonna go to our holy triumphant. We've got you and Chaitanya and Gus, who are gonna bring us through a various number of topics all related to um, governance, risk, and compliance. So when we say governance, risk, and compliance, it's, it's a very key and, and differentiated capability for us in, in, in uh, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management. It is something that we're all very, very excited about. And so we'll hear a lot about that today. So what I'm gonna do, because we have such a, a deep schedule of things that we wanna show, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Jaya who's gonna bring us through some intro and, and ground us on what it means for governance, risk, and compliance. Hi, everyone. Um, excited to be here and talk about the cool capabilities we have at the GRC, uh, capability of ACM. Um, I, just a quick intro on myself. I am the Chief Security and Governance Architect for ACM, and um, I have been working in the security space for over 20 years and I'm working on cloud security for uh, over uh, seven years. So I'm, uh, I'm really passionate about this topic because I bring to this technology the experience I had in dealing with security for managed uh, cloud offerings. And uh, so I feel I understand what customers need in this space. And uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. So let me share my screen. The joys of technology. Here we come. Yeah. Screen sharing is always fun. Okay, you should be able to see my screen. Yep, Correct? looks good. Okay, so oh, I'll just put uh, in present mode though, please. Sure. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I am basically going to. Um, just use a couple of charts uh, to set the stage and also show a little demo of our product. Um, so if you think about customers, enterprise customers who, when they embark upon the journey to transform to cloud from their traditional IT infrastructure, one of the key things that they are worried about is security and compliance. Um, and um, the, re the reason it's a little more complicated in the cloud space is because they are not just dealing with one cloud provider. Typically they are using more than one because they don't want to get locked down into one cloud provider. They also are dealing with a hybrid cloud scenario where they want to put some of their workloads in private clouds, some in public clouds, and then they also want to integrate the data that is already sitting within their enterprise. And, uh, and obviously the, their security team is asking them to ensure that whatever cloud they are using um, is meeting their enterprise security standards. And their compliance team is upon them uh, making to say, you know, how do we meet standards such as PCI when they, if they are in financial industry or HIPAA in healthcare industry, et cetera. And some of these um, uh, customers who are in highly regulated industries have to go through such audits periodically, like PCI requires an audit every year, right? So then if you think about all these challenges, um, what they really are looking for is a way to maintain continuous security and audit readiness for an open hybrid cloud. That's really their vision, right? So what is our answer to that, right? Our answer to that is policy-based governance. So what do we mean by policy-based governance? What we are saying is if you take a cloud and if you want to secure it, you need to enable various security controls 
you know, security controls for encryption, for authentication, access control, et cetera, right? So some of these security controls, if you take Red Hat OpenShift are provided by Red Hat. Red Hat has built-in mechanisms, for example, to integrate with SAML and other identity providers, et cetera. But some customers also use technologies from other partners. SysDig is an example, right? So they may have standardized on using certain security tools within their enterprise, and they want to bring those security tools to bear when they are using a cloud. So really you want to ensure that all these security controls are configured properly to best practices. And best practices could be NIST 853, it could be PCI, HIPAA, et cetera. So the operations team that is actually managing the cloud is not necessarily an expert in all these various aspects. So just think about the challenge they have on their hands. So how do we make it easy? So the way we make it easy is we want to represent the industry's best practices and enterprise best practices as policies that result in a desired configuration state. That is what we mean by policy-based governance. And we want to apply this principle across the entire stack, across the entire hardware and software stack all the way down. Because that is really how customers have to operate their cloud to achieve their goal of continuous security and audit readiness. And this is what Rackham brings to the table. And how does Rackham do that? So the way Rackham does that is based on um, open standards and technologies. So for example, we have the ability to incorporate multiple policy languages, including OPA. We, have the, we are developing all these policies in a collaborative manner using our open cluster management upstream community project where we have partners contributing like Sysday. We are working with other partners as well. And uh, we are enabling this GitOps methodology where once we have a set of policies defined in that policy collection repo, you can use GitOps to deploy it easily into Rackham through the, to the managed clusters and essentially monitor and uh, integrate with your enterprise um, I see incident management tools and security operations center, et cetera, to achieve this, achieve this goal. So we are also, for example, collaborating with NIST on, um, in fact, if you look at our policy collection report that you will be demoing shortly, you will see that uh, we have organized our policies based on the NIST 853 standard. So, so that's kind of our approach is to have an open collaborative approach to develop policies. Um, and then let me touch briefly upon our overall governance architecture. So what we have here is we have the management hub. This is where you come in and uh, you can uh, uh, both uh, de de define and deploy policies and you can also monitor the violation state of the policies. And there are three different ways in which you can get policies into Rackham. You can use CLI, you can use UI, or you can use GitHub's. Our preferred methodology is GitHub's. The reason it, that's the case is because this allows you to manage policies just like you would manage source code. So you have it under control and you can easily deploy it to the managed clusters. And then on the left-hand side, we have the various managed clusters and um, within the clusters are various policy consumers exist. So some of these policy com consumer, consumers are, con are controllers that we ship out of the box in Rackham. So for example, we have a configuration policy controller which is pretty powerful because it can allow you to configure any Kubernetes resource. So if you have a capability, whether it is in security or resiliency or software engineering that you want to represent using a Kubernetes resource in terms of configuration, our configuration policy controller can be used to ensure that that uh, capability is configured to best standards across, the, across your entire fleet of Kubernetes clusters. Um, and then we also have uh, Gatekeeper OPA, we have the compliance operator, which is the new capability that came in OpenShift that allows you to actually do compliance checks on core OS. Uh, so we have integration with that too. And we have third party integration as well. And we have our community of practitioners. These are the Red Hatters who are working with customers, defining policies and bringing them to our upstream project as well. So that we have a full uh, collaborative effort here that includes customer uh, engagement. Um, with that said, I'm going to show you um, a quick peek into the product. So when you uh, get onto our console, this is, um, and you go here and you click the governance and risk view, this is the view you get. And you can see here that what I've done here is I have forked our policy collection repo and created uh, my own uh, repo and then customized it and then used GitOps to deploy these policies. 
So you can see all these policies are already deployed. And for each policy, you'll see that uh, you can define multiple standards that the policy applies to. So for example, this certificate uh, management policy applies to NIST CSF, it also applies to PCI. So you can have standards, categories, and controls that represent various aspects of security. So you can see, you know, we have policies for encryption, for access control, we have policies for configuration management, system and information integrity, communications protection, et cetera. These are all out of the box policies that we have that are available in the policy collection repo. And when you do that, then uh, there is a concept called placement rule by which you apply a policy to a set of clusters. The clusters can be labeled and you can apply policies to the clusters and then you detect violations and those you can then uh, look here. And they are organized in terms of the various standards that we have. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to you, who, who will introduce himself and then take us through the policy collection repo. Okay, um, let me share my screen. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Yu Tao. Um, I live in uh, <coughs> North Carolina. So uh, I'm, I'm the dev lead for GR, GRC squads. So um, <clears throat> all the cool stuff you see previously, previously JR, uh, uh, JR presented, uh, they are all developed by, uh, by my team. Um, today, um, I'm going to uh, quickly go through, um, uh, go through some uh, uh, fancy policies we, we have uh, we provide out of box and also contributed by uh, the uh, ex uh, community from community and um, and then I'm going to actually do a quick demo uh, to show you how we can how Radcom framework can can use another policy language like OPA uh, integrate them together and then present pre present present it to you through the <coughs> through the UI dashboard uh, in a unified way. Um, so first of all, so Jay uh, uh, previously showed uh, the cool framework that uh, G, uh, cool GRC framework that uh, Radcom provides that you can create a policy on the hub and the, with the placement rule and placement binding, the policy will be applied automatically to all the cluster you manage based on your selection, right? Um, so this 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 policy based framework is cool. Uh, but what about the policies, the content of the policy? What policy do you have out of the box? And can I actually create my own policy? So, so we are all, we as a development team, we are all, we are aware of this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, this, uh, this issue. So policy collection, re this repo is our answer. So Basically, this is a public repo, as you can see. Uh, there's already a lot of forks. forks. Um, so, this is a basically is a gallery that hosts all the policies, either contributed by uh, either contributed by the community or red hatters or uh, internal either internal external teams. We also have policies that uh, ship out of box as part of the Recon product. So if we look at this repo, uh, we have two folders, uh, one stable folder and one community folder. So stable folders is where we host all the policy we ship out of the box. As you can see, all the policy are hosted here and then they are categorized by <coughs> NIST 853 standard. Um, so before I, I uh, <coughs> maybe I should, uh, I should talk about the, what, what a policy looked like first. So it, just in case you're not familiar with, for example, let's take a look at this policy row, right? So as Jay mentioned previously, uh, when you create a policy, you create a policy self, and then you create a binding and placement rule. So binding based, uh, placement basically use a label selector to apply the policy uh, to a set of cluster or a, uh, or, or a subset of the cluster. So for example, in this, this uh, particular example, so we are selecting all the cluster with label dev, environment equal to dev. 
binding is, is essentially binds the policy and placement rule together so that we know uh, this placement rule is, is for this policy. Now we can take a look at policy. So policy is a CRD recom introduced. Um, so, so, so it has annotations for you to customize the standards, categories, and controls this policy belongs to. If, uh, if you categorize correctly, you, you will see a nice, nice, <coughs> uh, nice tiles here that it is uh, different policy are categorized in, into different uh, category standards, and then you can view the view uh, differently. Uh, that, that's extensible, right? You, I mean, you can you can create your own annotations and put them in there. So we come out of the box, and and you can add your own annotations to the policy that might organize them in whatever makes sense for you and your enterprise. Exactly, that's that's how this was designed. So we want to give you the freedom to categorize the policy in your own way. It might not be the like NIST eight hundred fifty three. It can be any standards that it's either internal and ex or internal. Uh, Enterprise standard or like uh, or the NIST 800 NIST standards or any other standards, so it's all customizable. Um, so, if you look at the content of policy, so basically this pol what this policy does is uh, um, it actually leverages the configuration policy we ship out of box to to make sure on your cluster you have a role with with the rules you. You <clears throat> with the rules you define. So it use like must only have to make sure it only has the permission you define. If it has any extra permission, when this policy is applied and enforced, it, the, the 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 extra permission for that role will, will will be removed and corrected by the policy engine. So this is basically how uh, what a, a policy look like. So yeah. I, so I wanted to just chime in here and say that. Uh, for security for security buffs over there. Uh, so this, you can think of it as uh, ensuring that the least privilege principle is adopted, right? So if you have configured your roles to have certain permissions and somebody goes off and adds additional things, this policy can be used to kind of flag that so you can detect it right away. Exactly, yeah. So so our, our policy engine is, uh, is really powerful that it can do like crack uh, crowd operation on your resources. For example, uh, you can create a resource with our policy, create any Kubernetes resource with our policy. You can patch it, you can delete it. So it's it's very powerful uh, in this in uh, in the uh, in terms of how you want to configure a policy. So uh, how how you want to configure a cluster. So for example, if we if you look at the community repo, uh, right? So here we host uh, uh, the, these policies are all contributed either by internal or external or our uh, business partner. So if you look at this repo, so we actually extend our capability uh, um, <clears throat> by introducing these third party policies. Um, so. If you look at uh, look at the details, they are they, they are uh, categorized and organized same as the stable folder. So, if you are familiar with stable folder, then you should you should be able to use this repo without any problem. So, for example, uh, let me show you one policy contributed by our business partner, Sysdig. So here, Sysdig they 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 have a uh, they they contribute two policies here. So the first policy is Falcon policy. So this is an their open source version of their uh, 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 of their uh, of their security scan capability. So this policy basically what it does is it will in install it will leverage the configuration policy to install the install system uh, to install Falco operator available on the on the GitHub uh, on the GitHub in upstream community, and and then. And then um, it, it will do the scan for you once the operator is installed. Um, same, uh, they also also contribute the other another part of a policy. Basically, it installed their paid version of their uh, Cystic Secure DevOps platform. Um, so it is also an operator. So you can just install it using our uh, using Recom configuration policy. Um, the other policy. I want to show you show you here is 
the compliance operator policy. So compliance operator is a, is a new, new capability that OCP introduced to, to, to do the, uh, to, do the uh, compliance scan on your cluster. So uh, with, with, uh, with the power of uh, GRC policy-based framework, you can simply create a policy to install a compliance operator and then also install the, the profile, to, the profile to, to scan your, uh, your cluster. So this is all can be achieved using configuration policy. Um, so basically, as long as it is an operator, you can use our GRC policy to create an operator, to install an operator on your managed cluster. Yeah, so, so let's, let's take, a, take a step back and look at, you know, what do we, what do we just see here? We have, this open, so we have this open community with contributions, and it wasn't a mistake that we kind of borrowed the concept from Ansible. Right, the success from Ansible is a community grassroots based success program where people are contributing playbooks and reusing playbooks. And, and this is where we, 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 we got our motivation for creating this open source community because from an operation from an, from an offering team, we can crank out policies with every given release. But you know, the contributions from the broader teams and the experts into this community will help it grow and flourish. And that's why we have the communities folder and the stable folder. And what you'll see is that things will naturally be curated from community into the stable folder and more and more things will surface in the box. And so that was really the concepts that we have here around providing this, um, this policy collection that you set up for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so exactly. So since we are, we are building this community driven re, uh, uh, open <coughs> open policy collection repo. So we also received contribution from our field team. So uh, from our field team, they they deal with the OCP cluster uh, best practice every day. So um, they 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 were able to to basically uh, they were they they, they are able to actually basically convert their best practice uh, into a policy that you can simply use and to configure your OCP clusters. For example, so we have a policy here that you can use to upgrade your OCP cluster. Uh, we have a policy here that you can use to um, configure your cluster like egress, ingress, and also like uh, DNS, configure the DNS, configure the network. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do uh, to configure a cluster by using a policy. So the, this repo, this repo also hosts these uh, these uh, best practice using policies. Um, and for example, we also have we also have like contribution from our COP team, com uh, <coughs> community of practice team. So they they have like expertise in OPA and Gatekeeper. So. You know, uh, so basically, uh, they they basically contribute their their OPA and gatekeeper uh, policy into our into our this policy collection repo, and then convert it into a GR uh, 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 RACOM policy. So, for example, here we have we have policy that using OPA gatekeeper or Rego language, you can, uh, using Rego language to detect if your containers are using latest image tag, which is a floating tag, which shouldn't really be used. And for example, we also have a gatekeeper policy that help you to detect if your containers has um, liveness of, uh, or redness probes set. So we have, <coughs> we actually welcome uh, contributions <coughs> uh, from all parties to this, as long as you just, as long as you follow our documentation here, to, uh, the contrib contribution guide here. Um, so you can just create a PR and then, and then we will review it. And then uh, if everything looks good, then it'll, it'll be merged to this repo. So, uh, so you, I, I wanted to also add here that, um, I mean, the philosophy within RACOM is our policy framework should be based on open standards and technologies that makes make it very easy for folks to write policies, right? Or add contribute policies. So for example, the built-in configuration policy controller, because of, of its ability to distribute Kubernetes resources, 
uh, SysDig and um, the compliance operator team were able to crank out policies. They didn't have to really build a policy controller, write a lot of code, right? They just had to develop the policy, that's it. And right. then we were able to right. deploy SysDig um, as well as Falco operators to a fleet within minutes, right? So that's the power of that. And similarly, like you are showing the gatekeeper policies, right? So we are building an operator for gatekeeper that will allow Rackham to deploy gatekeeper onto your OpenShift clusters using a policy. And then um, the community of practitioners or customers or partners, they can just write gatekeeper policies uh, in Drago and then import it. And, and uh, it's a simple way to extend Rackham, Rackham's power. So. Sure. Just wanted to highlight our, the, the powerful nature of our policy framework. The, the name of the game here, Chris, is time to value, right? And so when you stall ACM, you have an empty management domain. So how do you get those policies in there? How do you get those best practices in there? The OpenShift consultants would show up with all those things tucked under their arm. And now they're just available as soon as you install and we use you know, GitHub or GitOps practices for bringing those into the management domain, which we'll show in a moment. Yeah, that's it's pretty awesome, right? Like the power of OPA and Rego to just define exactly what you want to happen or not happen in some instances <laughs> is uh, rather vast, right? Like you can almost do anything with it, it feels like at times. And the fact that we're baking OPA into Rackham, I think is just awesome. Yeah, we, we, we call it, or I, I always call it the one-two punch, right? Yeah. Right, that's a good ACM way to put it, yeah. Policies. Yeah, the ACM policies that we've, we've described and deliver out of the box for setting the desired state configuration. And in, and in the right hand, you've got OPA who's confiting, conf, those policies are preventing configuration drift. And so your entire fleet. And the other thing that we, we kind of mentioned is desired state and shouldn't go understated is that the, the philosophy behind ACM is this desired state driven model. We don't use profiles. We don't use these static templates. We don't use blueprints because the day two operations and the configuration cluster uh, configuration uh, desires are, are continuous. You know, you always want a new way that you're setting up the cluster. And if you bake those, those configuration activities into cluster inception, then you've really kind of created a, a point in time desire. And, and, and the way Rackham works with the placement rules is that you create a policy at any time and roll that out to the fleet that then brings you know, everything into, um, in, into what you're looking for. Right, and, and, our, and combine that with GitOps, right? So that kind of brings that whole end-to-end -end story there where you manage policies just like you manage source. You have the full control within Git and then Rackham takes over from there and make sure it gets deployed everywhere properly. It monitors it, it reports violations. And then the other thing, uh, I know there was a Twitch uh, session here on observability. We are also going to integrate these policy violations to our observability layer, which then would result in those heading to uh, incident management tools and SOC and you know. So you have the end-to-end -end life cycle there. Nice. So I imagine like I envision a day potentially where Oh, something's out of policy. Uh, ACM creates a service now ticket. Boom, off off it goes into the security, you know, exactly. team's life cycle of, you know, management. Exactly. That's right. awesome. I mean, that's that's incredibly powerful stuff, folks. That like you want continuous security as much as you want continuous integration and delivery, right? Like that I feel like exactly. is as important if not more important than the actual delivery of it. Like the securing yeah. of it continuously is vital. Yeah, because we have to integrate in the customer's existing processes, procedures, right? That's mm -hmm. the only way to be successful, yeah. In prior sessions, Chris, you saw Josh and the team go over application lifecycle and how we integrated Ansible into that. Right. So that, that's a strategy that's for all parts of ACM. So we'll be in that very near future that you're talking about, you'll see you know, the ability to configure playbooks into, you know, what is the action you want to take when a, a violation. Right. Yep. It could be, a, a service <clears throat> it could be, you know, start a pot of coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you want to show one quick demo of a sample gatekeeper policy just to? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, before I jump, before I jump into the demo, I just want to quickly mention, right? So this repo is available today. If you just want to try the policy, just uh, in this repo, you just fork the repo and then follow the documentation here using GitHub, GitHub to deploy policy. So with a simple command here, um, um, deploy command. So you can, you, it will be uh, all the policies from this repo will be deployed to a cluster. So behind it, it is basically creating a channel and subscription uh, based on uh, based on the pass of your Git, uh, GitHub URL and the folder you want to pull. So if you look at my cluster here, so anything I deploy in namespace policies, right? They are they are they are pulled from the the policy collection repo uh, stable folder. Um, so you don't have to use our UI. You can just use GitHub's to do that uh, very quickly. Um, all right. So in fact, you that's that's our best practice, right? right. You, yes. as you can imagine, you know, policies being as powerful as they are, with great power comes great responsibility. Bingo. So, <laughs> And when you have the governance model of GitOps with, uh, you know, the however you want to manage those pull requests for introducing new policies to the system, you manage that in GitOps from a GitOps style, and then it's delivered to the hub through the channels and the, and the subscriptions. That's us eating our own cooking, drinking our own shame, champagne with the application lifecycle capabilities, delivering that to the hub. And then once it's in the hub, those placement rules distribute it to the fleet um, mm -hmm. as, as required. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, now I'm going to show you a gatekeeper policy example. So I have a gatekeeper policy installed here. Uh, I'm not going to show you the content now, but if you look at here, they're all green. They're compliant. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me open a command line window. So this is on my manage cluster. So the, the UI, this is running on hub. This is on my manage cluster. So in the old days, when you create a gatekeeper policy, a uh, gatekeeper policy, Without Recom, you have to go to manage cluster, create a constraint, um, and, and then and then <clears throat> and then the policy will be enforced by gatekeeper uh, of uh, gatekeeper controllers. So I've already installed a gatekeeper uh, constraint here. It is called KS require labels constraint. So this is an example I pulled from gate gatekeeper website. Um, so if you look at content here. Oh, my cluster is a little bit busy. It's throttling my Kube request. Okay, so if you look at here, it is saying it is zero violations. So basically, what this policy does is uh, it will it, it will it will enforce the rule that you cannot create a namespace without label gatekeeper. So I'm enforcing this constraint on test and Twitch namespace. I'm not enforcing them on any other namespaces. So basically, currently it is compliant. There's zero violation. And here on Recom Hub, it is all it is also compliant. So now I'm going to violate it, right? So basically, I'm going to create a namespace without gatekeeper label. So let me call it Twitch. So now it is right, it is. This is what we expect. It is blocked by gatekeeper admission webhook because it doesn't contain gatekeeper label. Um, I'm enforcing this constraint on Twitch. So if I do another create, for example, test one, it will go through. So that means it is already exists. Uh, let me create another one. Yeah, it, 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 it went through. That means gatekeeper policy is working expected. Now let's switch to the, to the dashboard here. Let me actually enable the auto refresh. So as you can see, it turns into violation, violation, right? It is not compliant. So basically what you can see here on hub, you can see in real time that there's a violations happening on the managed cluster and we are reporting it through the hub. So imagine, Im imagine, imagine you have like, uh, like hundred clusters have this uh, gatekeeper policy enabled. If you want to check it, check the violation in the old way, you have to go to each cluster and then figure out if there's a violation or not. But with power of Racom GRC framework, you can just see it, see it from the, uh, from the dashboard. And now, so 
Yeah, uh, and to add to that, you uh, once we have the integration with the observability framework, right? This kind of violation will actually result in an alert, and you could be seeing uh, an alert on your Q radar, for example, your uh, sim tool showing up, depending upon what it is, right? Um, or it it could it could open a pager duty. It could result in a pager duty paging or somebody, depending upon the severity of it. Um, so that's kind of the power of this, right? And imagine Rackham managing a fleet of 100 clusters, 200 clusters, and you know, when something is not right, you can get the, you can be notified. Mm -hmm. set, set that desired state, prevent anyone from changing it, and then tell me if anyone tries to change it. Right. Yeah. So so to achieve this, I I didn't you you, you don't have to invent anything. You just need to create a policy right here. So if you look at the YAML file of this policy, what we are doing here is essentially I'm creating a configuration policy, right, to specify the constraint template I want to create on the managed cluster and specify two companion policy to detect for the violation, one for the, the, uh, the existing violation, uh, violations on existing namespace and one for the violations on uh, and a new uh, new namespace <clears throat> that's being blocked by gatekeeper policy. So all the all these capability are uh, achieved without writing any code. You can just create a policy to do that. Uh, this yeah. this really this really brings the uh, flexibility that you want to integrate with any other existing uh, policy uh, engine or policy language. Uh, so, so you can just 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 bring any existing existing policy engine into GRC framework, and then using the same approach to to manage and to detect violation to 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 report the uh, to to bring the uh, violation report to Recon dashboard. Okay, yeah, that's my part for the gatekeeper demo. Thank um, you. Now I'm going to hand over to Gus for his demo. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you, you. Get it. Thanks, you. That was a great overview. Great job, you guys, and great discussion. Um, like I said, my my name is Gus Parvin, and I'm going to start digging a little deeper. Maybe maybe we'll just consider this a a, a quiz time, um, because I think. You've already heard a, a great overview of the capabilities. You've, you've heard about the, the GitOps, about our community. Um, you, you've heard um, you know, some of the cool features of the configuration policy controller. Uh, really what I'm gonna do is just take us through a couple more policies. Uh, we'll kind of dig into these two a little bit and Hopefully with what you've already seen, this is you know, just, just more of the same and, and just helps you understand and, and see that the, the breadth of the policies we have is, is growing and, and you know, we, we have a lot, of, a lot of cool things out there to, to, to show off and, and uh, available for you to use. Um, yeah, and Gus, the two policies you're going to show are fully supported by Rackham, right? They are from the stable folder. Exactly. So one of the cool things there is if I go up here to create policy, mm -hmm. the things that are available to create with without using the GitOps, you know, just using the product, show up here in specification. These are the stable policies. These are are the ones that that we have pulled into the product. Um, I'm going to talk about the certificate policy here. It, it's the first one in this list and the image manifest vulnerability policy. So both of these are, are easy to, to create, whether you're using the GitOps or whether you use the product and, and just mainly go and, and create the policy. Um, you know, for example, all I did was selected the image manifest vulnerability policy in, in the specification list and and it's, it's populated the policy um, here automatically for me. Um, I could fill out these other fields and, and then 
create the policy. I've, I've already got a couple created here. So I've already deployed this policy. And you know, since, since I picked that one, we'll, we'll go through this one first. Um, and uh, before I do that, I'll, I'll just mention, you know, these are uh, you know, security and compliance policies. Um, you, you can see we've categorized them with the NIST 853 that, that we've talked about um, earlier in, in the call. And when, when Jay was going over the overview, you know, we, we have, you know, these standards, categories, and controls. And um, for the image manifest vulnerability, you know, we're, we're trying to look around for all of the different vulnerabilities our, our images have. So this is the an, an image scanning policy and um, you know, similar with certificates, you know, it, it's, um, it's, it's doing a search of your secrets on the system to take a look at any certificates that might, have, might be expiring or, or have other um, you know, policy violations. And, and here, you know, that's part of the system and communication protection category here. Um, so if I, if I click on one of these now, um, this particular policy you see is, is not compliant on, on both of my clusters. Uh, but, but what I want to do is, is kind of test your knowledge here. Um, you did a good job of going through the uh, compliance operator uh, policy a few minutes ago. So let's, let's see if you can remember you know, what, what's going on here with this policy. Um, if, if we take a look at the, the definition here, um, we see some, some key things. Um, you know, one key thing, this is using our config policy controller. Okay, that's the one that we've been talking about a lot and, and its power is is uh, you know, really awesome. And once again, we're, we're using it here, just like with the compliance operator. Um, if you take a look at what's being defined, we have, we have this must have field and it is being enforced. So we are applying this set of configuration. What is the set of configuration? Well, it's installing the container security operator. The container security operator is, is going to get installed on, on any um, managed cluster where this policy is, is being placed. Um, I have one of those clusters here. So if I take a look at my, my managed cluster, um, right here in the overview, I see this image vulnerabilities. So great, you know, now I can go to my managed clusters and, and see these vulnerabilities and, and I get a nice breakdown. Uh, but, but, you know, just like what um, you were saying, you know, I, I don't want to have to go to each of these managed clusters. So, so what can we do? Um, as, as you know, you know, there's, there's more you can do. You can include not only the deployment of the operator, but in the same policy, there's a definition we have here to go out and collect the vulnerabilities that have been found by the operator. It's, it's a little bit different. Look, it's still using the configuration policy. So that's that config policy controller, uh, but now it has a must not have. And it's looking for a particular, um, a, a particular custom resource. So um, th these, these resources called image manifest vulnerabilities get created when the operator finds an, an image with, with a problem. Um, in an image with a vulnerability. Okay, so we, we dug into the details there. We, we see that not only can you deploy the operator, you can then look for the resources the operator is going to, to create so that we can see the vulnerabilities on the system. So now I'm going, going to back up here real quick here. Um, let's go back to the status. Um, when I'm looking at the status, I see here on the left, endpoint and local cluster. These are my, my managed clusters that are not compliant. And I can see some details on why they're not compliant. Um, you, you see a pop-up, you know, there's a lot of information there. So I really want to click on view details to drill into 
to what's going on here. When I do that, I see the list of resources, just like I, I saw when I went to the managed cluster, you see the list of, of, of different vulnerabilities here in, in the managed cluster console. I get that same data here on the Rackham console. So I don't have to go through each managed cluster. I can just take a look at it here. Um, and looking at the, the YAML here, it tells you, you know, I have images that are have vulnerabilities, you know, there's, um, you know, fixes that need to be applied. And down here, it, it tells you specifically what image um, re requires the, the, the update. Uh, so, so that's a little bit about um, the, the image manifest uh, vulnerability policy. Now, we can move on real quick to the certificates policy. So Gus, uh, uh, just to re-emphasize, right? Um, so I think what you saw here is the power of our configuration policy controller, right? So you absolutely, can, yeah. You can, because of the built-in controller that we have, you can just define a policy. You're not writing any code. You're just defining a policy to deploy an operator for a particular capability. That operator could be the compliance operator, image vulnerability operator, the content security operator, or it could be any other operator like SysDigs operator, et cetera, right? And as long as that operator is returning results as a Kubernetes resource, in this case, the container security operator does, we are able to consume that, right? And, um, and again, that consumption also happens by just writing a policy. Right? Exactly. So, so I think that's, that's the message. If you didn't take anything else, that's the message I want you to take here, that you can just write policies to deploy operators for various capabilities and as long as those operators return the results as CRs, we can consume those as well. And we, we did both in one policy. So it's, it's not that you have to write, you know, bunches and bunches right. of these, you can, you can combine them into one to, to right. simplify it. So then, uh, you know, makes it easier for deployment when you don't have to. Yeah. Okay. That, also reminds, that also reminds me of another piece of work that we are doing in the Kubernetes policy work group. We are actually working to standardize how policy results are returned, right? So if that happens, then you can basically um, have Rackham consume those standard CRs, right? And then anybody can write a policy that returns results in that particular format and it's all open and uh, standardized. So exactly, yeah, big simplification. So Chris, Gus, I'm looking at our clock. We've got about five minutes left and we've got uh, Chitai. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, so for certificates, I, I'm, I'm not gonna go through the details and you know, say too much here. For certificates, I'll just say here, we, we see we're not compliant, but look, notice the non-compliance is we're exceeding a duration. So the, the lifespan of the certificate is um, longer than what we've configured. Uh, the, the community for trusted certificates has, has gone from 25 months down to 13 months. And you, know, you, can, you can set you know, whatever policy you want or whatever time frame you want um, for certificates. And here's another customer request we got uh, to uh, have no certificates with wildcards in them. So we, we have a way to allow you to, to disallow wildcards and if we were to just take a quick look at what's going on there, uh, by default, we just check for a certificate expiration. That's that's you know the main thing we care about, and it digs through your namespaces to to find the certificates that are about to expire. You can you can add these extra parameters to look at the certificate lifespan to see if somebody's creating certificates that are good for 10 years and you know or we're, we're just hoping they would never expire and, and then they probably don't have a you know a, a procedure to uh, replace that certificate if if it is ever uh, compromised um so that that's really uh, and, and, and here you know I, I wrote two separate policies here so one of them is looking one set of namespaces for the um you know not wanting the wildcard pattern in, in their SAN names. And, and then the other one was looking at the, the different durations 
uh, on the certificates. Uh, so that was real quick so we can get to Chitanya to, to dig into some more policies. <clears throat> all right, I'll stop sharing and Chitanya, it's all yours. As you, as you flip over to Chitanya, you know, you looked at that informed policy, right? That gives you kind of an impact analysis as you're introducing new policies to the system. It's just basically telling you, hey, this is not, not in your desired state. But enforced policy is going to try as much as it can to, to put it into your desired state. So there's, it's not just all or nothing. You can, have, you can start off experimenting with policies with an inform to understand what the impact analysis would be on your fleet. Hey guys, um, I'm Chaitanya. Um, I am going to take you through another one of our policies, the etcd encryption policy. Um, as um, Jaya mentioned earlier, um, Rackham governance can be used to comply to various standards. So this etcd encryption policy falls under the security and regulatory compliance. So what is this policy for? Um, this policy enables, uh, the etcd encryption policy enables us to enforce across managed clusters encryption of sensitive data in etcd, which is the Kubernetes backend data store. Um, this basically provides us an additional layer of security for our data at rest in etcd. Um, for example, if your data or your backup storage is lost or stolen, uh, data on it would be encrypted. Uh, not easily get be able to get to. Um, so here um, I have my GRC console and as you can see, I already have the policy pre-created. Uh, one of the main reasons why I uh, pre-created it is because the encryption process once enabled can take up to 30 minutes or more depending on how much data you have in your environment. So I have pre-created it and I'm going to quickly run through and I have recorded while I was creating it. So I'm gonna very quickly run you through that um, um, recording. Um, so here, um, so before um, I create the policy, uh, I'm logged into my managed cluster here on a terminal and um, I'm going to run a command that shows us the current status of encryption on that cluster. Um, so here's the command. And as you can see, the current status here is encryption disabled. And then I'm gonna go back to the GRC console and start creating the policy. So um, I'm not gonna take through the whole entire details here because Gus did go through it pretty um, in, in, in good detail. So I have my policy creation. I'm gonna choose the namespace and the cluster to which I wanna deploy it. But one of the important things to notice here is that I'm choosing etcd encryption as a specification. And we will also notice that this is a configuration policy as well. Uh, we initially started by looking into creating a separate policy controller for all encryption features, but in OpenShift specifically, enabling encryption uh, mainly involves patching or updating your config custom resources. So um, we realized we didn't really need a controller and we pivoted to just leveraging our config policy controller. Now, um, after my policy is created, um, I'm gonna again rerun that, I'm gonna go back to the terminal and rerun the same status command and we'll show you that once the policy is applied, um, the encryption status will go into, so the policy is now applied. Um, And it shows it's got a violation right away because it's not in that desired yeah. state, yeah, Chris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean, declarative, right? Like that's, we, we keep talking about declarative, 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 it's vitally important. Right. So after I have my policy pushed, um, uh, I'm going back to my terminal and checking on the status uh, by running the same command again. 
And as you can see, it went into in progress state. And like I mentioned before, this can take up to 30 minutes or more. So that's the end of the recording. And I will go back again to my GRC console. And it's been a while since I created the policy and the policy is now in compliance. And if I go back to my terminal here and rerun the same status command, you can see that now all resources are encrypted. So like I mentioned, only the sensitive data in, or secrets data in etcd um, is encrypted, not all the data. Um, in OpenShift specifically, the resources that are encrypted are the config maps, um, your secrets, routes, and any OAuth um, access tokens. Yeah. Um, that's, awesome. um, that's mainly for the demo, but I just have, I want to highlight a couple of things quickly. One of them is that today we support hub self management in ACM. Um, so this policy can be applied to the hub itself and, and thereby encrypt and protect um, your secrets on the hub too. Um, um, and another one of another, also wanna add to that, that we are looking to harden security further by integrating with Vault. Um, enterprises um, centralize their credentials or secrets using tools like Vault, CyberArk. So we are also looking into enabling ACM to work with these tools and use these tools uh, for the secrets that we have in ACM as well. Um, that yeah. started and that concludes my part. That was, yeah, yeah. Chinai is leading that effort for us and understanding how we can, uh, we can manage and leverage those, you know, our ecosystem and third party for secret and sensitive data encryption. Thank you, Chaitanya. Yeah, yeah thank you, Chaitanya. And I think the key point, uh, one of the key points she mentioned is the us eating our own cooking, right? So we can apply the policies to secure the hub itself. Because if you think about the hub, managing policies on all the clusters, and like Jeff said, policies are, uh, it's, it's, it has a power, but comes to responsibility as well, right? So I think managing and securing the hub also is important. Yes. Sorry for running a little bit over, Chris. I apologize, but you can no see, worries. No, we're very, very excited. We, we just scratched the surface there. In a couple yeah, really. I mean, there's there's so much deeper we could go on this. And, and maybe we should in a future session, potentially, right? To just kind of show off the real like power of ACM with OPA and everything else. That's right, yeah. Certainly, we'd love to reschedule and get another another around, you know, especially yeah. as we wraps up some of our research on Vault and other ecosystem. Oh, and absolutely. It, yeah, that'd be great. I think the one thing that, you know, we call it governance and risk, but it's really configuration management for the most part. And and we, we call it governance and risk because I think that 85% of your configuration management is in, is in pursuit of governance and compliance and, and mitigating risk. Yeah, that sounds about right. Awesome. Well, great show. Really appreciate everybody. All your work. Thank you as always. I always love having the uh, ACM team on. It's a great group of folks, wonderful tooling, and just trying to make, you know, clusters better, right? I <laughs> think trying to make managing multi cluster, you know, systems, distributed systems, a lot more feasible for folks. At scale. At scale. At scale. Right. Yes. Excellent demos too, by the way. Um, I did not get any questions. Well, hang on. Let's see. One question. Will there be support for virtual machine compliance, OpenShift virtualization, for example, and integration with OpenShift compliance operator to ACM? That's a tough question. Um, that, it's not really that tough of a question. You know, we're, we're really, really involved in the OpenShift virtualization and how that's coming to market. There's a number of different things that we, uh, We've we've have had some some success in that area of virtual machine compliance um, prior to our move from from IBM. There was a, some research in there. We're working with making sure that we bring that into the product as well. So when that lands, you know, with OpenShift virtualization in general, I think a lot of that Ansible integration for you know the virtual machines running on Kubernetes and being able to apply that uh, anything you want via Ansible uh, as well also intersects there. So absolutely. And compliance awesome. operator integration we already have. So 
Right. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I've got another stream to jump to. And uh, we'll catch you next time here on uh, Keep Red, up great work, Red Headed. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.